Hello everybody, so I'm back with a basic to intermediate level Feral Druid guide. The plan for this is to basically be for anybody who's never played this spec before, or is returning to Feral and hasn't played it for a little while and just needs to freshen up on how things are working. It's for pre-patch uh, of Dragonflight, and also for Dragonflight, the actual expansion when it releases. But it should hopefully be like a timeless video to really just uh, help people out. I, I really want to just cover the basic foundations of what Feral is, rather than like core rotational things and then i will save the rotation stuff for like another video where i'll break things down i think that's hopefully how i'm going to do it otherwise this video will get way too long also want to say come check me out on twitch.tv slash cyber underscore tv so that, uh all the links down in the description below so you can actually watch me during pre-patch you can come ask your questions about stats and talents and what's the best build for pre-patch and all that stuff and that's cool ask any of your even if it's a really super basic question that's totally fun to me i love interacting with you in chat so please come do that Please come talk to me. That's all good. So jumping into this, everything is obviously subject to change. There's going to be tuning changes and who knows what and things could change. But right now in terms of stat weights, we are looking at crit being our main stat or it's either greater or equal to haste. So crit and haste both looking really, really good. Then mastery, then verse. So we're looking like we're going crit haste. Now, why is crit so good? Crit is really, really good because you get the increased damage modifier from crit. Um, and then you also get increased combo point generation from crit because of this talent here, which used to be a baseline effect, but now it's become a talent because of how they're doing things in Dragonflight. So you get extra combo point generation, which is really, really good because it's energy efficiency. You then have haste. Haste increases the tick rate of our bleeds. And because we're so bleed heavy now, we have a bunch of talents that work really, really well the quicker your bleeds tick. For example, tear open wounds, saber tooth, circle, apex, all that kind of stuff. It means that haste is a high value right now, more so than mastery, which is kind of fun uh, funky. So crit haste are looking really, really good. In terms of the talent tree on the right, this basically just has like all of the really expert, like all the actives, all the stuff that you got to track and keep a, uh, keep in mind when playing. I would rather teach you like an advanced version of Feral in a very basic and intermediate level so that you can spend the next month being really bad at it and practice it. And then you can spend the next two years in Dragonflight when the content actually matters being great at it. So that's what I want to try and do for you. And that's what this is about. So I've got a lot of stuff like Moonfire here and Blood Talons and all that kind of stuff. I will do another video that covers like really basic feral stuff. If you want to play like a really simplistic, very passive feral, then I will give you that build so that you can just go at it. In terms of the class tree, there's some really big like fundamental things here. So Primal Fury, as I mentioned, really, really important. You want to come down this left-hand side of the tree. You get your kick there and Skull Bash, really important. So you always really want those two abilities. You then want to come down the right-hand side of the tree there and grab Astral Influence. It increases your range of all abilities. So you can attack in cat form from quite a distance, which is really nice in avoiding mechanics, spreading with quaking, all that kind of stuff, and maintaining high DPS or high uptime on, on mobs. After that, like Kara's teaching is the only thing on the tree that's really going to give you a damage boost here. So that's really important. Going to give you 6% crit in cat form. Apart from that, everything else then is like up to you. Like Typhoon, if it makes sense. Maim, if it makes sense. Defensives over here, if you think you need to live something. Additional healing here, if you want to help the team and you want to heal and you want to give innovate. All that kind of stuff. Those are all then like situationally good. Now in this video, I'm not going to get into owl weaving itself. I will again save that for another video because I think owl weaving is quite an advanced expert thing. And I would rather you guys focus on the basics of Feral and getting those perfect then you can focus on Owl Weaving. Owl Weaving is a very, very minor damage increase and you will lose damage if you mess it up and you lose out. If you, if you mess it up, you'll lose damage. So it's better to just focus on Feral. Now, getting into the core of Feral, the crux of Feral, what is it? It is a energy spec that uses combo points, generates and spends combo points. You have bleeds and you have non-bleeds. You don't really have, you know, like if you play Enhance, you press a button, it's on cooldown for eight seconds and you have a bunch of that. Feral, you can press anything, whenever. So it all becomes about pressing the right ability at the right time. So you're always spamming something of value rather than just like spamming thrash and not getting any value. So that's how the, the spec kind of works. Now, your main bleeds are Rake, Rip, Moonfire, and Thrash. 
Moonfire, you get from this talent here, Lunar Inspiration. You're probably going to play it in a lot of content from Raiding to even Mythic Plus as well. You don't have to play it if you really, really don't want to. You can skip it, but assuming you're playing with Moonfire, then that's what you do as well. So Rake, Thrash, Rip, Moonfire. Those are all your main bleeds. The most important thing for Feral Druid is establishing your bleeds and having as high uptime on them as possible. Always. Now, Rake, Thrash, and Rip, you're going to be using in AoE. Moonfire, you're only going to really be using in single target, so like maybe one to three targets. Right now, based on number tuning, you're raking infinitely. doesn't matter how many mobs there are, you're always going to be wanting to rake because of Double Claw Rake and like Sudden Ambush and Infected Wounds. These are all really good talents in amplifying the effect of rake. So you're going to rake, want to rake a lot. Rip, you actually apply an AoE via Primal Wrath. So there is no difference between a Primal Wrath rip, which applies to every mob in 360 radius, or an individual rip. The only difference in terms of damage is that individual rip lasts twice as long. But if you're constantly Primal Wrathing an AoE, then you don't really care about an 18 second duration of rip. So Primal Wrath is the exact same damage per tick of rip. So in AoE on two or more targets, you want to be Primal Wrathing instead of ripping. That's a really, really, really big thing there. Apart from that, some kind of like basic stuff of Feral is you will also get clear casting abilities. So Omen of Clarity, which you will pretty much always take, makes it so that your abilities, so your Thrash, your Brutal Slash, or Swipe, and your... So here we go. We got a clear cast immediately. Really, really lucky. So Thrash, Brutal Slash, or Swipe, if you haven't talented Brutal Slash, and Shred, they will, they will glow whenever you get a clear cast proc. That makes them free cast. You can see there's no energy associated to Thrash right now. So that makes it free. Thrash and Shred are both really expensive energy-wise. They're 40 energy. Whereas Brutal Slash is only 25 energy. And if you don't have Brutal Slash, say you're just playing with Swipe, then that costs 35 energy. I know it says 25 energy. Ignore that. It's 35 energy. So you always want to make sure you're using your clear cast on the most expensive energy ability. So Thrash or Shred, depending on what the situation calls for. So that's like the kind of all the little nitty gritty with Feral. That's like the main stuff. And those are kind of how you want to be playing it. So in terms of your individual like abilities then, before I go and getting into cooldown windows and stuff like that rotations. So Blood Talons is something that you want to keep in mind. Whenever you use three different combo point generators in a row uh, within four seconds, then you get um, a buff, which makes your next two rips or ferocious bites have 25% increased damage. So if I use three different generators here, I use Thrash, Rake, and Shred, I get my Blood Talons there. So that makes my next two rips and first bites uh, do, do increased damage. So that's really, really important if you're playing Blood Talons to always generate Blood Talons as often as you possibly can. Um, obviously, you always want to, you know, you don't need to overlap it if you already have two stacks, but you always want to be generating that. So you're basically going through a situation of generating combo points, spending combo points, applying your bleeds, reapplying your bleeds, and then um generating blood talents and spending blood talents those are like the ebb and flow of feral that's like the crux of it if you can master that you can master feral so in terms of your like rotational stuff what you're really wanting to do with your individual abilities where they all fit in the spec and in rotations so rake is a really cool bleed that you want to maintain is actually what you're going to open combat with because you want to uh, so rake if you read the tooltip it gets 60 percent increased damage when used from stealth so there's really big stealth modifier on the damage. And that will be for the full duration of the rake, which is really important. You then have Shred, which also has a stealth modifier. However, Shred does 20% increased damage when targets are already bleeding, which means that you want to establish your bleeds before you do something like Shred or Brutal Slash because they both gain damage from bleeding targets. So it's really, really big in like single targets. Make sure you rake first from stealth and in AoE, always have something like thrash or primal wrath rips on everything before you start slamming like swipe or brutal slash or anything like that uh because you'll maximize the damage output so rake is what you use from stealth it has the damage modifier the damage modifier comes from pouncing strikes so this talent makes it so that your rake and shred deal increased damage when used from stealth that's really a key there that's what's doing that effect that effect also applies in berserk so Berserk also makes it so that your Rake and Shred are as if used from stealth. So these are the key windows that you want to be using like Rakes or Shreds depending on, on the situation, stealth situation. So Rake is like a core 
um, bleed that you want to apply, your next most important bleed that you can use is Moonfire. So you'd Rake, you'd Moonfire, then you'd Thrash. That's three different abilities, so your Blood Talents is now generated, and I can do that here. That's three different abilities, so there's your Blood Talents generated. Next, you just want to build up to five combo points, so I can use like a Brutal Slash. And then that's when you would want to apply your Rip. And then you can just like maintain your bleeds and that's all good, that's all dandy. But that's the order in which you would want to establish all your bleeds. Rake, then Moonfire, then Thrash, then your Rip. The reason why, because your Rip lasts longer. It does the same damage per tick. No matter if you use a one combo point Rip or a five combo point Rip, it's the same damage per, per tick, per second. The difference is that it lasts, the duration is dependent on combo points. So that's why you always want to rip with as many combo points as possible to increase the duration. So that's that. After that, once your bleeds are established, you could shred, you can brutal slash, whichever one you want. Brutal slash does do more damage than shred in general on single target. So that's how you're killing time and making sure that you never overcap on energy. You never ever want to overcap on energy. So like you know, once you have your bleeds established, you just, you know, kind of vibing, you're chilling, you still have a blood talent available, so I don't need to worry about generating that, that's cool. Then you can go into, like, reapplying your bleeds, make sure those are still going. But all my bleeds are up, so now I can just shred, I can brutal slash, I can, I'm vibing, right? So that's, that's the main bulk of Feral right there. That is your core kind of rotation. Outside of that, you then have modifiers that are going to affect these things, like your cooldown windows, and things we call snapshotting and pandemic windows. And I'll explain both these terms. So snapshotting is increasing the effect of, a, of a, an ability, so a bleed, before you apply it. A bleed or a dot, before you apply it. So blood talents will snapshot your rip. If you generate your blood talents and then you apply a rip, for the full duration of that rip, it will do 25% increased damage. So it's really important that you'd want to do that. If you rip before you apply Blood Talons, then your rip is going to be losing 25% damage from not having Blood Talons on it. So that's snapshotting. That's all it is. Snapshotting is not affected by trinkets or anything like that. Those all dynamically scale. So if you apply a bleed and then you get a trinket proc, that's okay because that effect will affect that bleed that's already running. So that's awesome. So snapshotting is very simplistic now compared to how it was back in the day in Mr. Pandaria, right? So the only things that are going to snapshot that you really need to worry about are your rip and your rake. So rip is snapshotted by blood talents. And this also applies to primal wrath. So when you primal wrath in AoE, all of those individual rips, even if it hits 20 mobs, every single one of those has 25% damage amp on them from blood talents. So really awesome. However, there is also initial hit effect of primal wrath. That is not modified by Blood Talent, so that's something to keep in mind. You then also have Tiger Fury, which snapshots your blood to, uh, your rip. So Blood Talons and Tiger Fury both snap your rip, and that's the only thing that they're the only things that will snap your rip. Tiger Fury increases the damage of that rip by twenty one percent for the full duration of that ability. So really important to always apply rip with Tiger Fury active, and you can always do that. You can always, always, always do that. As long as, like, and it helps to take something like Raging Fury if you're in, like, pure single target or raids and whatever, because this will increase the duration of your Tiger Fury whenever you're using finishers. So you can have, like, close to 100% uptime on your Tiger Fury. So you can always reapply your rip with a Tiger Fury active. And you can always reapply your rip with Blood Talons active. So that way, you can always snapshot your rip. Now, your rate is snapshotted also by your Tiger Fury in the same like mana, you apply Tiger Fury, then you'd apply your Rake. But you can't always guarantee that you're gonna have like full snapping of your Rake because it doesn't last as long as an effect. So you can't always guarantee it. But it also gets snapshotted by Sudden Ambush slash Stealth Effects. So if you're from Stealth, then that will snap your, your Rake. If you're in Berserk, if you're in Sudden Ambush, any of those things, will they all do the same effect. They all make it as if your Rake is from Stealth. So they will all snapshot that rake effect by 60% damage. Not, it's not additive. They won't each do it, right? So if you have any one of those, then it's fine. So you want to make sure that you're applying your rake on single target and in AoE as much as possible in a sudden ambush window. So if I try and generate a sudden ambush here, it'll be propped whenever I have a 50% chance whenever I use a finisher to 
get um to get a sudden ambush. So we got one here. Cool. So now I can reapply my rake. And I want to make sure, like, your shred will also consume that sudden ambush. So you want to make sure, like, if I, I got to reapply my rake here, but if I was to shred, I would lose this sudden ambush proc. But it's way more important, like, rake, the full duration of one rake will do more damage than a shred. And rake costs less energy. So it's better to apply your rake with the snapshot of sudden ambush than it is to apply a shred with a snapshot of sudden ambush. Now, if you apply, um, if you apply a rake from sudden ambush, and then you get an apex proc, apex is this talent here, which makes it so that you get a free ferocious bite, that can also trigger your sudden ambush. So if you apply a rake from with sudden ambush on it, it gets that damage modifier, and then you immediately get an apex proc, and you, you bite, and you get a, it procs sudden ambush, right? It has a 50% chance to do that. If you get that, then you can just shred because you don't need, like you've just applied your rake. Makes sense, right? So keep that stuff in mind. Now, if you're in a situation where you're, like you don't want your rake to fall off. So if you're in a situation, you get unlucky, you don't have a sudden ambush and your rake is about to fall off, then just reapply the rake. Don't worry about it. Like it's not the end of the world. But if you proc sudden ambush and your rake is going to need to be reapplied soon, like in the near future, then try and save that. So you try, so say I need to reapply this rake soon and I don't want to shred. Then I would just do other filler abilities. I got Moonfire, right? I've got my um, Brutal Slash. I got, say, like, th oh, I accidentally convoked that. Okay, that's fine. But, you know, I can I can rake, I can, I can thrash, I can do Moonfire, stuff like this. Like, I can use these filler abilities whilst I'm waiting to reapply that rake. So you just avoid, like, shred. And you can actually avoid shred for a very, very long time um, if you need to. So keep that in mind. That's snapshotting. Now, pandemic... <laughs> Take a minute. Now, pandemic windows are points at which you can reapply your bleeds before they fall off whilst maximizing the effect of that bleed. So, for example, a really easy way to look at this is it, it, it's 30% 30, 30 of the full duration of the bleed. So if your rake is 12 seconds, then technically you can reapply your rake if it has 4 seconds or less on the duration. So... For safety, I always go just like, you know, a little bit below that. So I go for like three seconds or so. But you could reapply it at one second, two seconds. As long as the effect hasn't fallen off, then the remaining amount of damage on that bleed will get reapplied to the new bleed. But but you maximize it in that, in that last final 30%. So to demonstrate this, you have rake, which is a 12 second dot, right? If I apply rake here, lasts for 12 seconds. Now, if I reapply rake, it'll go up to 14 seconds if I just keep reapplying it, which is longer than the initial duration of a rake. So that's the pandemic applying to the new rake. However, by doing that, if you were to just spam rake, you're losing a vast majority of that rake damage. So the best thing to do is just always reapply it in the, in the pandemic window, and you don't want the ability to fall off, because if it fall, falls off, then you're losing uptime on those ticks. So you never want your bleeds to fall off. You always want them active and you just reapply in that pandemic window. You can get an add-on to help you with that. I track it via eye and just mentally knowing when it's at a point. And also you can get add-ons that give you timers on them. So you can you can track it based on, you know, um, the timer remaining. Now that applies for all of your bleeds or all of your dots. So Thrash, Rake, Rip, and Moonfire will all have pandemic windows that will all be 30% of their bleed duration. Now, the problem is right now, you have Circle. This has an effect on the Pandemic window. So if I was to remove Circle, Rake would go back up to 15 second duration. So that will have an effect on your Rake application. Same with if you were to take Vein Ripper. That will actually increase your Pandemic window. So that will make Rake 18 seconds, I think. So then you, you'd have like, you could reapply Rake at like six seconds or less or like five seconds or less, whatever it is. Yeah, six seconds or less. So depending on which challenge you take, th that will also affect your pandemic window. So keep in mind Circle and Vein Ripper in, in affecting your, your pandemic windows there. But that's pandemic windows. So basically the crux of Feral Druid is you're trying to snapshot your bleeds. You're trying to hit the pandemic windows of your dots. And then outside of that, just never overcap on energy. And that's like the big, that's how you're trying to play Feral Druid. If you can master snapshotting pandemic windows and just maintaining your bleeds, then that is 90 8% of Feral Druid, okay? The
The only other thing you have to worry about is your cooldown windows. And I'll get into that in a second. But um, yeah. Something to keep in mind as well is your Ferocious Bite costs 25 energy. If you pull an additional 25 energy, you can see in the tooltip here, then it will do 100% increased damage. So you always want to use Ferocious Bite at 50 or more energy to increase the damage. Really good energy efficiency. Apart from that, that's like all of your abilities. That's everything. Now, Adaptive Swarm is something I'm taking on this talent tree. You can play without Adaptive Swarm. That's fine. But Adaptive Swarm is looking pretty good. Also, Feral Frenzy, if you play with that, that is also going to have its own like individual kind of distinct use. But basically, the way you would use Feral Frenzy is that also snapshots from Tiger Fury. So you'd use your Feral Frenzy in your Tiger Fury windows, but before you Berserk. Because if you Berserk, Berserk is going to give you combo points. So you don't want a Feral Frenzy when you already have a couple of combo points. Because it's going to be really low combo point efficiency. So you'd want a Frenzy Band, and then immediately Berserk, and then go into your like kind of cooldown window, right? So... The way you would do your rotation, uh, uh, like a little trick with Adaptive Swarm is you, like Adaptive Swarm is a whole video on its own in terms of how to min-max that. But to keep it simplistic, you always want to apply Adaptive Swarm to an enemy that doesn't have it active rather than applying it to a friendly target. So if, if the enemy already has it on them and you're in single target, then you can apply it to a friendly target and then they'll basically keep rotating between each other and awesome, you have like really high uptime on Adaptive. But what you would want to do is to keep it simple, I believe it's like Adaptive Swarm, if an enemy has two stacks on them, if every enemy has Adaptive Swarm on them, then you would want to prioritize a target with two stacks, and you can reapply your Adaptive there, then a target with one stack remaining, and then a target with three stacks. That's the priority list, as far as I remember. And then zero, and then, well, like zero stacks, and then you'd go on to a friendly ally. But that's a little bit more complex. Don't worry too much if you didn't get that, what I just said. Don't worry about it. So a little trick here, and I'm going to go through the single target rotation here just at like reasonable speed, just to get a, rota a look at like how this is actually playing out. So I'm going to pre-adaptive swarm myself. This is a nice little neat little trick. So you can see it's up here in the top right. I'm tracking it. So if you're doing like a raid, like, you know, 10 second countdown, you can, re you can apply it to yourself. Then I would stealth rake, I would moonfire, I would thrash. Now I can tiger fury and I can like just build up to five combo points and then apply my rip. And then that's when you would like Feral Frenzy or whatever if you needed to. But I would I would establish my rip. And just before I'm about to rip, I would want to Berserk. So by Berserking and then Ripping. So Berserk is off the GCD. So you don't lose anything for like doing that. But what it means is that then you can immediately Convoke. Because you want to Berserk and then Convoke in your cooldown window. Because Convoke uh, or Berserk will make it so your abilities act from stealth. So you get increased damage on your Shred and any rakes that you do by a 60% damage increase. So it's really good to Berserk and then Convoke. And that's the order in which you want to do it. Um, also in like AoE and stuff like that, if you Berserk and then Convoke, well, your double cord rakes will... Your Convoke will rake mobs and those mobs... Uh, or those rakes will apply to two targets because you have double cord rake. So for each rake you do in your Convoke window, will actually apply to two targets, and each of those will have a 60% damage amp on them. So if you can Berserk and then Convoke an AoE, it's actually really good. Also, any Ferocious Bites that you do during your Convoke window will activate Rampant Ferocity. So you can do like four, you can do like four Ferocious Bites in a row, and just do like back to back to back Rampant Ferocity damage, which is like really cool. So that's how you do like your opening rotation, is you would go in from Stealth, you would Rake, you would Moonfire, you would thrash, and then you build up to five common points. If you have five common points, awesome. Then you can Tiger Fury, Berserk, then you would rip, and then you'd send Convoke. That's how you do it. Um, obviously, I'm assuming that you already applied Adaptive Swarm to yourself before you went into combat. Uh, but let's imagine, you know, Adaptive Swarm comes up now. You basically just want to make sure that like you prioritize establishing your bleeds if your bleeds are about to fall off use them first and then adaptive swarm you, you always want your bleeds active because adaptive swarm is dynamic it is not a snapshot so you can apply adaptive swarm after your bleeds are already running and it will amplify the damage of those bleeds whereas if you apply adaptive swarm to a mob and then you establish your bleeds then you're just losing uptime on pandemic on your um on your adaptive swarm sorry so it's really important to apply your bleeds and then adaptive swarm in terms of synchronizing, like Berserk and Convoke, 
they will have different timings depending on which talents you have. So Berserk default is three minutes. If you take Heart of the Lion, on average, it will make your Berserk two minutes. If you take Convoke, it'll be two minutes, and then you can make it one minute with this uh, talent. So obviously do the math, that will synchronize depending on the timings. But uh, if you have two minute Berserk and two minute Convoke, perfect. You use them both together, they'll always come back up at the same time, so you're perfect. But if you have like one minute Convoke and three minute Berserk, it can get a bit funky. Sometimes it's like a raid boss mechanic and you don't want to send Convoke or it's quaking or something. So it can desync your Berserk and Convoke. Because Convoke is a really short cooldown, you don't want to sit on it. Because it's really important to send it as often as possible. So if you're, if you're sitting and you're waiting like 15 seconds to then use your Convoke, just use it and it'll resync with your Berserk later. It's fine to use your Berserk and Convoke separately, but because it, it's better to get more overall uses of a bad use of a cooldown than to get like the perfect use of your cooldowns all synchronized perfectly but you only get like a, you, you get fewer of them right so keep that in mind in terms of that that's like everything with feral in terms of snapshots pandemic windows rotation like what you're trying to do with your abilities and like establishing them and and uh kind of maintaining everything so i can play this at full speed now so I have like Tiger Fury, Berserk, I can adapt it there, sure, go for it, and then I can Convoke. But by 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 Tiger Furying, and then, um, if I, like, I go in a rhythm, right? So I, I, I Rake, Moonfire, Thrash, build up to five combo points, and then very quickly, I Tiger Fury, Berserk, Rip, all in one global. Because Tiger Fury and Berserk are both off the GCD. So you can do both of them and Rip, like immediately and then that way you've got your rip snapshotted from your tiger fury and your blood talents and then you can like berserk and immediately go into convoke and it all works really really well um the only other thing is like you might be asking why don't i stealth and then r tiger fury and then rake so that i can get the snapshot on my rake as well really good question it's so that you maximize your Tiger Fury uptime during your Berserk window. Because Convoke doesn't cast Tiger Fury anymore. So you want to Tiger Fury right as you're about to Berserk so that you get maximum uptime. Now, if you're playing a talent like Raging Fury, and we have really high crit chance, so we're using a lot of like finishes very quickly, and we have a lot of energy and all that kind of stuff, then we will basically be able to have like 100% uptime on Tiger Fury. So eventually, yeah, you will be able to do that. You'll be able to Tiger Fury, then Rake, then Moonfire, Thrash, build up to five common points, then Berserk, Rip, and then Send Convoke, right? But right now, I would just advise against it, just in case. Um, so hopefully that all makes sense in terms of like playing with everything. Obviously, have fun, like try out some different talents and stuff. Obviously, if I was playing Feral Frenzy, like I say, I would like, you know, before I Berserk, so I, I would like Tiger Fury, Rip, so I'd do the exact same thing. I would rake, moonfire, then thrash, build up to five combo points. I would tiger fury, but I wouldn't berserk. So tiger fury, then I would rip. So it would snapshot my rip. Then I would immediately feral frenzy. So feral frenzy snapshots from my tiger fury. And then before I used my finisher, I would berserk and then I would ferocious bite. And then you can convoke. Now, in terms of like using Ferocious Bite, as long as your rip isn't about to hit its pandemic window and you can like regenerate your combo points before you need to rip again, then you can just like send Ferocious Bite whenever you have energy available. Just like go for it. But be very, very careful that you're always, you know, going to have your Tiger Fury and, and like available for your rip and your rip isn't going to like fall off. It's really, really important to have as high uptime on rip, rake, and moonfire as possible. Now, in terms of AoE, again, I can kind of use this rotation for like AoE. It's really, really important. So like on two or more targets, you just want to Primal Wrath. Like you Primal Wrath, you don't use Ferocious Bite unless you get an Apex proc, which will give you a free bite at maximum potency. So when you get an Apex proc, you don't have to pull to 50 energy. It uses your Ferocious Bite as if you were at max at like 50 energy and five combo points. It's like a max strength Ferocious Bite. So... You only want a Ferocious Bite when you get an Apex proc in AoE. So you, other than that, you just Primal Wrath. Whether it's two targets or 20 targets, doesn't matter. You just Primal Wrath. The reason being is Tear Open Wound will always make it so that your Primal Wrath is like doing a big initial hit. 
so you want to be maximizing your tear open wound effects. So you would, um, and, and also something to keep in mind with that is that tear open wound isn't applied on your initial primal wrath. If, if targets don't already have rip on them, then tear open wound, like, won't have an effect. It's only once you apply your second, so like if I show you, if I show you, if I primal wrath now, my damage breakdown, there's ne no tear open wound. There's tear, that's a different talent. That's this talent, rip and tear there. So you don't get tear open wound unless mobs are already affected by rip. So now if I do that same rotation and they already have rip on them, and then I primal wrath again, well, now this time, there's that tear open wound damage. So you're maximizing, you're trying to maximize that tear open wound damage because it's really, really strong. Now, whenever you get an apex proc and you bite, not only is it going to be doing rampant ferocity and doing bite damage to all targets around you, but also it's going to proc your saber tooth, which increases your rip damage by 20%. And that is dynamic. That doesn't snap. So that will apply to rips that you already had active before you bit bites uh, or rips that you apply after um you ferocious bite just as long as it's within that four second window now looking at saber tooth that's a four second window of 20 percent increased damage after you bite and then tear open wound is a four second window of 60 percent increased damage on all your rips so if you ferocious bite from an apex proc you don't lose any combo points so you can be at five combo points you can apex bite it'll proc your saber tooth giving you 20 percent increased rip damage and then you can Primal Wrath immediately and you'll get 60% increased damage as well on top of that Primal Wrath and uh, or on top of those rips. And you apply Primal Wrath to everything around you. So it's like really big, like additional damage all adding up together. Um, something to keep in mind as well is you want to make sure that you're applying your Primal Wrath or your, uh, your Primal Wrath as often as possible because tear open wound damage will be dependent on the remaining uh, duration of your rips. So if you Primal Wrath everything and they have two seconds left on Primal Wrath or on Rip, and then you Primal Wrath again, it'll only do two seconds of tear open wound damage. So you'll lose two ticks or potentially more if you have haste, right? So you'll lose like two or more ticks of Rip damage at 60% increased potency. So you want to make sure you're Primal Wrathing as quickly as possible so that you're getting as much tear open wound damage as possible. Um... The other thing with that is that your so Primal Wrath on two or more targets and you spam it at five combo points. Double Claw Rake, you use on as many mobs as there are. Just keep Double Claw Raking and switching target and raking and raking and raking. The only other thing is that Brutal Slash scales from once you um, hit five or more targets, Brutal Slash scales like really, really high. So the more targets you add, the more value there is to Brutal Slash. So keep Brutal Slashing there. The only other thing on AoE is like you're not going to Moonfire in AoE. You'd only Moonfire on like one to three-ish targets, roughly, depending on tuning. But in AoE, you're basically like Rake Spreading, Brutal Slashing, Primal Wrathing, and then only Biting when you get an Apex proc. The only other thing to consider is generating your Blood Talons. Now, you can play in Mythic Plus without Blood Talons. Just go Lion Strength. That's totally fine, and you have nothing to worry about. You can just Rake Spread, and you can Brutal Slash, and you can Primal Wrath, and you're fine. But... Blood Talons will increase your single target damage by quite a bit. So it's important to probably get used to Blood Talons in Mythic Plus if you really want to excel at Feral. If you really want to min-max. If you don't want to min-max, go Lion Strength. But what you would do is, like, rake. So, so what you do is, you like, a big, big tip in Mythic Plus is, like, say there's a mob and he has, like, 10% health left and it's the last mob remaining and then you're going to move on to a big pull. A big tip with Feral is to store up combo points and store up blood talons. So what I would do, you'll see me all the time in Mythic Plus, like a mob is about to die, and I will sit on five combo points and I will not use the finisher because there's one mob left in the pack and it's about to die. So realistically, I'm considering the, the TTD, the time till death of that mob, and do I want to maximize damage on one mob that's about to die, or do I want to take that damage and instantly apply it to the next 10 mobs that we're about to instantly pull? So what you can do is you can have like one mob that's about to die, generate five combo points and use three different uh, combo point generators to apply to like get your blood talons. Then you can move on over and you'd be like, all right, cool. I'm ready for the ne next big pull. Re-enter stealth, you know, adaptive swarm, your stealth, uh, adaptive swarm yourself, cool. Re-enter stealth. And then you can like go in, you have five combo points. You have two blood talents. So you can immediately go into combat, rake and just primal wrath 
and you immediately have every mob with Primal Wrath, with Tiger Fury, with Blood Talents, like all snapped, like big damage in AoE. It's like a really big tip in maximizing your damage in Mythic Plus and just instantly having some damage. Just be careful of tank aggro. So that's, guys, that's everything. Like, that's cooldowns. In Mythic Plus, you can desync your Convoke and Berserk. Don't worry about it. Just send it. Um, adapt your Swarm Spread as much as you can. And then just, like, you know, don't forget about using, like, you know, Ursine Vigor. If there's a big hit about to come in, switch into Bear Form to, like, you know, take that. Um, yada, yada, yada. Right, this video's gone on 35 minutes. Hopefully that's really, really helpful as, like, a basic introduction guide. Getting back into Feral and just, like, getting back up to scratch with things. The servers are about to go down for beta, so I'm about to get kicked off. I have to finish this video here. My throat is dead. I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you come check me out on Twitch or leave a YouTube comment on any questions or anything that you have outstanding. There will be more guides to follow. So make sure you're following and subscribing to the YouTube channel to keep in, my, uh, you know, keep in contact with that when those videos are dropping. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.